Thank you, Miguel, and thanks to the European Reference Network Transplant Child to do, for the opportunity to present this webinar on pediatric split liver transplantation. My name is Marco Spada, and I am a transplant surgeon. I graduated in medicine at the University of Pavia, where I had also my residency in general surgery and my PhD in experimental small bowel transplantation. I continued my training in abdominal transplantation at the Thomas Stasol Transplantation Institutes of the University of Pittsburgh. And back to Italy, I got an attending position first at the Bergamo Hospital and after that at Ismet in Palermo. In both hospitals, I worked as an adult and pediatric transplant surgeon, as well as a pancreatic surgeon. And since 2016, I am the director of the Division of Hepatobilio Pancreatic Surgery, Liver and Kidney Transplantation at the Bambino Gesù Children's Hospital in Rome, where I'm also in charge of the research unit of clinical hepatogastroenterology and transplantation. I have no financial disclosure or conflict of interest with the presented materials in, in the presentation. After a quick historical overview, I will address the technical aspects of split liver transplantation and the results obtained with this technique. I will touch some aspects on donor and recipient selection, as well as on allocation policy. And I will conclude what uh, I believe to be the take home messages on split liver transplantation. It is not possible to talk about history without paying homage to Thomas Stasol. Dr. Stasol's contribution to the development of liver transplantation was absolutely exceptional. The first suggestion on segmental liver transplantation was by Blanca Smith in 1969. Few time after the first successful human split liver transplantation, human liver transplantation reported by Stasol in 1968. Smith, a pediatric surgeon, developed in animals a dissection method for the procurement of the left lateral segment, envisioning its possible application in living and disease donor transplantation. In his autobiography, Stasol reported the use of reduced liver graft in children in the mid-70s. And in 1984, Bismuth and Brush published the first series of reduced liver transplantation. In the 1980, Rudolf was the pioneer of split liver, enabling the transplantation of two uh, recipients, one pediatric and, and, and one adult, with one liver. In the same year, Henri Bismuth performed the first full left, full right split liver procedure with two adult recipients. The development of all these techniques were mainly driven by the high list mortality in small children awaiting a size match graft. Initially, results were disappointing, owing to the technical problems and poor patient selection. Although there was skepticism about the success of split liver transplantation, several European centers pursued this option. And a few years later, uh, per persistent efforts changed the situation. The Amber group showed similar results between whole liver transplantation and the split liver and documented that the use in adults of the extended right graft coming from split liver did not impact the graft or patient survival, postoperative complication, or initial graft function. Similarly, in, in, in 2000, in Italy, in a series of 65 consecutive pediatric liver transplant, we observed no difference in patient and graft survival following split liver in comparison to whole organ. Therefore, since the beginning of the new century, it was known that with the appropriate surgical techniques, along with proper donor recipient selection, the liver could be procured as a paired organ, 
in order to transplant two recipients, one adult and the other pediatric. The classical form of splittings helps achieve a left lateral segment, segment two and three, for a small child, and the right extended graphs, segment one and four to eight, for an adult recipient. Several techniques of split liver has, have emerged, such as the ex situ and the in situ techniques, and the trans and the trans umbilical division. All these techniques can yield comparably good results if chosen on the basis of donor and recipient characteristics and according to the logistical settings. I will mainly describe the in situ trans umbilical technique which is the one that we have chosen in Italy, because we thought that it was the best to allow the sharing of the liver between a pediatric program and an, and an adult one, and to promote the spread of knowledge of this surgical technique among surgeons. In performing in situ trans umbilical split, it is essential to have some anatomical landmarks. These are first the left side of the hepatodudinal ligament, second the rex recessus, third the falciform ligament, fourth the left hepatic vein, and finally the orantius ligament. The hepatodudinal ligament is dissected from the left side for the identification of the left hepatic artery. The artery is divided according to the anatomy with the aim of ensuring a good arterial revascularization of both graphs. When the arterial anatomy is regular, the celiac trunk can be kept with the left hepatic artery, which is usually smaller than the right one. On the other hand, we have to keep in mind that the choice to leave the celiac trunk with the extended right graph is the most determining factor in convincing an adult liver transplant surgeon to accept and, and to transplant the extended right graphs. An arterial branch to segment four, called middle, middle hepatic artery, may arise from the left or right or from both branch of the hepatic artery. Which, what is important to know is that no matter the origin of the middle hepatic artery, vascularization of segment four is from both sides. And this is because of intraparenchymal branches. And that, most importantly, complication to the extended right graft from the cut surface, mainly biliary leaks, are not related to the ischemia of segment four. Further dissection is performed. Further dissection is performed at the right side of the round ligament. The parenchyma in front of the round ligament is transected, exposing the round ligament. Branches to segment four are ligated and divided, as shown in this clip. And the left portal vein is then dissected and encircled, as shown in the clip in the middle of the screen. The surgeon can be guided by a vessel loop surrounding the left hepatic vein, and the extraparenchymal dissection and isolation of the left hepatic vein is facilitated by sectioning the rancius ligament and thus opening a window between the left hepatic vein and the vena cava. The parenchyma is transacted with any of the existing and preferred liver resection devices in combination with vessel ligation and clipping. The hilar plate, uh, which includes segment two and three bile ducts, is divided sharply at the longitudinal part uh, of the left portal vein. Then the parenchymal transaction is facilitated by the hanging maneuver, carrying out by 
bringing the left end of the tape surrounding the left hepatic vein along the rancius ligament and in front of the left hepatic artery and of the left branch of the portal vein. Compared to the transumbilical approach, the transhilar division moves the uh, transaction plan towards segment four, increasing the volume of the left lateral segment and preserving the middle hepatic artery when this comes from the left. Uh, and this gives also more chances to have a single bile duct when cutting the ilar plate. However, this approach implies an increased anatomical challenge and therefore more surgical skills and experience. Overall, this method exposes the extended right graft to higher risk of iatrogenic damages. As you can see in this picture, uh, in this uh, extended right graft, the common bile duct was severely injured because the dissection was carried out too much on the right side. In a modified split, lead, split liver, also called the full left, full right splitting, the liver is, is divided along the cantile line, resulting in the left hemiliver, segment one to four, and the right one, segment uh, five to eight. These graphs can be transplanted into adults, recipient, but also into big pediatric uh, patients. Full left, full right split is a more complex procedure, requiring knowledge of anatomical variation and high technical skill. And this actually hampered its, its spread and utilization. In a full left, full right split, we do not, do, we do not have anatomical landmarks in comparison to conventional split. And we have to face with higher anatomical variation and a larger transaction plane. The most critical issue are achieving safe bile and blood flow outflow from all the transplanted segments. The common bile duct usually goes with the right graft because of frequent anatomical variation are in the right lobe and because the right bile duct is usually shorter than the left one. The vena cava can stay with the right or left graft, and the split vena cava technique was developed for providing both grafts with optimal venous drainage. The techniques involve the division of the, uh, the, the vena cava, as well as additional venous reconstruction on the cut surface in order to preserve the uh, venous outflow. Worldwide, the number of size-matched pediatric donors does not satisfy the waiting list. And when wool liver transplantation was the only option, the mortality on the list exceeded 15 to 20 percent, up to 40 percent. Therefore, the pediatric, for the pediatric population, the use of partial liver transplantation is not a choice, but is, it, is, it is a necessity. When split liver transplantation has been widely used, it has greatly helped in reducing pediatric waitlist mortality, limiting the use of living donor liver transplantation, which on the contrary is the most widely used technique in countries where disease donation is occasional. When diseased liver are available, waitlist mortality varies according to how much split liver is used. In the United States, between 2011 and 2018, only 16% of pediatric transplant were split liver, and weight list mortality was 12%. In Italy, where a mandatory split liver policy is active, mortality in the same period was less than 2%. Since uh, we cannot uh, transplant all uh, of our children with wool organs, comparing results of split liver with wool organ can be misleading. 
a more informative comparison is between split liver and living donor liver transplantation. In the North American series, regardless of the time period, split had inferior results to wool liver, while in the most recent period, living donor liver transplantation gave the best results. In our experience, which takes into consideration more than 500 primary non-urgent pediatric, pediatric transplants, patient survivals were equal when comparing a live donor that constituted the 15% of the population to, to deceased donor, with split liver representing 60% representing of the group. Similarly, other series documented that, that split liver is effective is it, it is an effective technique with outcomes comparable to living donor graphs. The results of extended right graft transplantation are crucial to promote the spread of the split liver te technique. The early series documented that extended right grafts carried a higher complication rate. Moreover, registry-based analysis showed that the extended right graft transplantation was an independent fact risk factor uh, for increased graft failure. Further studies identified that uh, factors that negatively affect, affect the outcome. And these are donor age, long cold ischemia time, very sick recipients, retransplantation, and the low donor to recipient weight ratio. A recent cumulative meta analysis showed that despite the higher postoperative complication rate in the extended right graft cohort compared to the whole liver cohort, patient and graft survival were similar. And in his meta analysis, one concluded that notwithstanding technical complication, split liver could still provide more aggregate years of life, of life than wool liver transplantation, because it allows an effective expansion of the organ donor pool. And when donor and recipient are properly selected and cold ischemia time is limited, survivals and complication rates in the extended by graph and wool liver transplant recipient are the same. And finally, when a meta-analysis compared the living donor transplantation to deceased donor uh, transplantation with extended right graft or, or wool livers, split liver and living donor cohort demonstrated equivalent graft and recipient survival compared to wool organs. Few small series on a full left, full right split have been published so far. One case report showed that modified split, lead, split liver can be performed in pediatric donors to transplant to pediatric recipients. But otherwise, pediatric full left, full right transplant have been reported together with adult uh, recipients. The crucial point in obtaining good results are an optimal graft to recipient size match, adequate technical skill, and good judgment of vascular anatomy and graft quality. A small for size syndrome may develop after full left or full right split, and the graft to recipient weight ratio should be at least 1%. But as far as technical skill and proper donor and recipient selection are applied, there are no differences in allograft or patient survival in comparison to liver and living donor liver transplantation. A critical factor in the success of split liver transplantation is the selection of the donor and of the recipient, as uh, I mentioned in the previous slides. There are no unique criteria for selecting the donor. Eligible donors are usually hemodynamically stable, young or middle-aged, with short intensive care stay, normal or mildly elevated liver function test and sodium, and without moderate or severe uh, steatosis. 
Dimensional matching can be done on the basis of the donor to recipient weight ratio. And a donor CT scan, if available, allows to estimate the grass weight and volume, and therefore to perform uh, to know the graft to recipient weight ratio. The left lateral segment has a highly variable weight and therefore can be transplanted into children up to 25 30 kilo, kilos. And even if the desired graft to recipient weight, weight ratio is around the two, large for size graft can be transplanted also in small recipient without negative, negatively impacting the outcome, especially in chronic cholestatic patients with a big belly and ascites. The extended right graft is good enough even for large for size adults and does not involve a small for size condition. More strict selection criteria are used in the case of a full left, full right split. Dimensional matching cannot rely on donor to recipient weight ratio, and the donor CT scan with liver volume estimation is pivotal. In fact, the range of possible dimensional combinations is narrower, and the risk for a small for size syndrome is higher, especially when we use the, the left lobe or and in large recipients. Suboptimal graft venous outflow and the severe recipient portal hypertension can further increase the risk of a small for size syndrome. Split liver can be implemented uh, basically in, in two ways. At, uh, the trans at the transplant center level or at the national level. In the first scenario, the procedure uh, can be carried out both in situ or ex situ. Two or Two to three surgical teams are needed to perform the procurement and the two transplants, avoiding an unjustified and dangerous increase in cold ischemia time. This choice limits the diffusion of the technique and the donor to recipient matching, which is done from the center list and not from a larger list. A national split liver program offers the best chances of spree spreading split liver, especially among adult transplant programs. Matching can be done uh, from a larger pool of recipients. The in situ technique, which actually implies an increase in the logistical complexity, has however the great advantage of favoring the dissemination of knowledge of the surgical technique. In Italy, this, this, this strategy, promoting the execution of the split liver by mixed teams of surgeons from the two centers to which the two partial grafts are intended, allowed in few years to have in almost all centers young donor surgeons trained to perform the split liver procedure. In our country, uh, where a split liver was promoted for many years as the main strategy to reduce pediatric weight uh, list mortality, a mandatory split liver policy was introduced in 2015. Standard, donor, uh, donor, standard risk donors aged between 18 and 50 years not allocated to UNOS 1 or MELD over 30 patients are offered to the pediatric programs to decide split feasibility. And the children are also preferentially offered the pediatric donors. And when this donor weighed more than 40 kilos, the mandatory split liver policy apply. In adults, if the graft to recipient matching is thought not to be favorable, the extended right graph allocation rule allowed the center not to choose the recipient with the highest merit. And applying the mandatory split liver policy in 20 months, out of more than 1,500 donors, 16% were offered for a split, corresponding to more than three offers per week. Children undergoing split liver transplantation increased 
from 49 to 66 percent. And the pediatric waitlist mortality dropped from 4.5 percent to 2.4 percent and the median waiting time from 229 days to 80 days. And very importantly, the mandatory split liver policy did not cause an increase in the dropout from the adult list, nor an increase in the waiting time or adult, uh, of adults or, uh, or, 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 or graft mortality. 35% of the offered split were declined because there were no suitable pediatric recipient at the time of the offer. And this highlights the possibility of further expanding the split liver activity in favor of the adult recipients. And I believe that the Italian experience is the very proof of the results of the simulation carried out on the UNOS data which documented that 32% of splittable donors were not split, and that 8% of the potential pediatric recipient of these splits then died on the waiting list, while those transplanted had a longer waiting time. So coming to the conclusion of my uh, talk, uh, I, I believe that uh, the take home messages of this uh, transplant child webinar are that the split liver transplantation is an essential and strategic technique for transplanting children on the waiting list. While uh, it is fair to use all available technique to fulfill the list, leaving donor transplantation is justified once the use of the deceased donor and split liver has been maximized. A national mandatory split liver program can eliminate pediatric mortality on the list and significantly shortening waiting times. The in situ technique is the best to allow sharing the liver between adult and pediatric programs and to, to, to spread this technique uh, among a uh, liver transplant program. Adopted, adopted allocation rules for the extended right, gra extended right graphs that take into consideration risk factor allow for results equal to liver transplantation, thus increasing survival benefit for all liver transplant candidates. Modified split liver transplantation has the potential to further increase the donor pool, especially in favor of adult recipient or adolescents. And the development of an ad hoc programs and protocols is crucial for the successful expansion of the full left, full right split. Recently, our group described the first clinical application of oxygenated hypothermic machine perfusion in split liver transplantation. The liver from a deceased donor was procured in another country transported and under static cold preservation at our center, connected to the machine and splitted under continuous hypothermic double oxygenated perfusion. And the two grafts were then transplanted into two pediatric recipients after up to 16 hours of preservation. And I think that this report together with preclinical data and further clinical application coming from other groups, opens new horizons in the field of split liver transplantation, envisioning the possibility to further increase the number of splitable graphs, improve logistics and results. And I thank you for your attention. <laughs>